Who was your, who's your idol growing up? Well, I wanted to be Willie Mays. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I wanted to be a black baseball player <laughs> from like I was 8 to 15. And then when I was 15, I went, oh, shit. <laughs> I can't be a black baseball player. God damn <laughs> Today's podcast is brought to you by Babbel. Get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash Nash. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the All Good Things podcast. Today, I am sitting here. Guys, I bring you the best guests, the funniest people in the world. Today is a legend. Am I, am I coming in too, too hot? Uh, no, as long as you just stay there. <laughs> uh, this is one of the funniest people I've ever ever seen uh, from uh, he's from Saturday Night Live he's from tons of Adam Sandler movies a long list of credits I mean my favorite stuff is when you're on Saturday Night Live Mr. John Lovitz joining us today John tell me you created your most famous thing at the Groundlings the pathological yeah. liar character right that that came from the Groundlings not from <laughs> yeah, I, had, I have a friend of mine a girl and she goes I like a guy with a fat wallet and I go well my dad just had 15 oil wells come in and I go, well, I am a pathological. She goes, yeah, right. And I go, well, I am a pathological liar. And then we had to do a sketch in the Growlings, the Sunday comp. I got in this Sunday company where you'd, it was called panel. So you'd have a host and then six people. Yeah. Like a talk show. And the six people, they go, you you each create a character and your name and the first thing you're, and introduce yourself. And then the audience will ask you questions. So I, I go, so that, I was like, hello, I'm Tommy. Flanagan. It was like Flanagan, a member of Pathological Liars. Yeah, yeah. My name is Tommy Flanagan, and I'm a member of Pathological Liars Anonymous. Yeah. Anonymous, fact that. I'm Flanagan. the president of that organization. And then, and then someone goes, "How long have you been lying?" And I go, and I thought it'd be funny to go, "What are you talking about?" They go, "Well, you said you're a liar." I'm like, "No, I didn't." Like, just start denying that he even said it. Right. And Robin Schiff was in the group. Robin wrote, what, "What's the Romy and Michelle's Romy and Michelle, high school?" Yeah. Yeah. Robin was in. The, and she pointed out to me, she says, John, you set it up perfect. Now you just got to stay in character and answer anything. Right. I went, oh, I did? She goes, yes. <laughs> she goes, let's try it. I go, all right. She goes, all right, uh, what's your favorite sport? And I go, and I, you know, I did the look like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, bowling. <laughs> and it was just funny, you know, because you yeah. know he's like, <laughs> it's so random. And then, I, and then I wrote a monologue of it. I got in the main company and in the September of 84 and then January of 85, they were doing a new show and that's when I would do my liar character, uh -huh. the monologue, which was, I thought of a guy, you know, like AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, which isn't funny, but you'd hear, you know, they go, hi, I'm Bob, I'm an alcoholic, here's my story. So I thought, well, what if it was Pathological Liars Anonymous and, and the guy got up and told his story, you know, and then I go, but then he would just start lying about it. And right. Just so that was the monologue I wrote. And half the time it worked, half the time it didn't. Oh, really? So there were times yeah, when you'd and go then, up and do it and it wouldn't work? Yeah, and then one day... I had bits If like they that. didn't get the first, the joke, the first joke, the setup and the, the name and the intro, they, it didn't work. But it always worked on SNL. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, what happened was we did it on a, one Sunday in March. I have like 20 messages on my answering machine. Congratulations, congratulations. All from people in the Groundlings. But I don't know what, for what, that no one's saying. I don't know what they're talking about. So on Monday, I called Tom Maxwell's from like North Carolina or, or South, I don't know, North, I think. I go, Tom, what's going on? Everybody's congratulating me. For what? He goes, we're going on the Tonight Show. I go, who? He goes, you. They want you to do your oh. live piece. And Tom and uh, and, and uh, 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 Don Woodard and Mindy Sterling and Kate Benton do the White Man's Rap and you and Tim Stack do the Truck Driver's piece. I go, when? He goes, Thursday. I go, Thursday? <laughs> he goes, yeah, we're both screaming. So now you're on Carson. I used to tell the truth, but then one day I, I told a lie and I got away with it. Yeah, told my parents I had a brother that they'd never met. <laughs> they got mad at me for not telling him sooner. The, three days later. Amazing. If you're on Johnny Carson, you hit, you'd have a career. And, sure. But I was so nervous, you know. And then we go, to the, and then we go out for rehearsal. That studio was like 380 people. The ground league was 99 seats. So it just looked enormous. It looked like the rafters wow. went to the sky. So I'm out there and I said to the director, where do I look? He goes, just play it to camera. 
which was great advice because that's where the audience is. Yeah, right. A lot of comedians sit... They don't go look to the camera. Joe Coy used to open for me. He got the Tonight Show. I go, I go, Joe, play to the camera. So then I watch me look. They, they everywhere but in because they said don't. I go, no, you idiot. I, I go, that's where the audience is. Yeah, we're in the makeup room. Yeah, and Morley Safer is <laughs> Morley Safer from sixty Minutes is interviewing <laughs> Jack Lemon, who's going to be on the show. Wait, where's Johnny? I don't understand. He wasn't in there. Why is Morley the Safer? Well, he has his own makeup guy. So we're in there. Oh. And I remember thinking, oh, my God, this is that world where all these people live. Right. Because it was just another world. And and Morley Safer said to so Jack Lemmon, so you've been you've been an actor 40 years. What have you learned? You've been an actor 40 years. What have you learned? And Jack Lemmon said, I've learned. Keep it simple. And I'm like, I have my answer. <laughs> oh, thank God. You know, okay, just keep it simple. Yeah. So I went out and I did it and I just looked in that camera and sold it straight ahead. And at the end I go, so if you're out there listening, you have a problem with lying, give us a call. But in my mind, I'm thinking, so if you're watching this right now, you need an actor. Hello. <laughs> right. Call me. What's it like to go on um, like Adam Sandler sets? You've been on a ton of those. It's really fun. It's the way it feels. It's just fun. And it's. I think it's the way you should always feel on a movie, which is, all I have to do is be funny, and they're really appreciative that he's very appreciative that you're there. You don't audition; they just call you and say, "Look, no. this is your part, right?" No, right. Audition <laughs> at this point. <laughs> well, there must be some things you have to audition for. Well, I can tell you, ever since I only got one job since I got Saturday Night Live that I auditioned for. Which was it? Mr. Destiny and uh, Jim Belushi. It's kind of like It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah, play I his best friend. There's a dramatic scene where I'm on a ledge and I'm going to jump. So they wanted to hear me do it. But other than that, I've never gotten a job since I got to SNL that I auditioned for. Because I go in and they already know who I am. It's just a waste. Yes. It's, I go, and I, they go, well, I go, what do you want to know? If I can act? Right. I go, I, here, I've done like, 60 movies and watch them. Right. Have you ever tried? You know, it, it's, it's in different characters. It, it's just a waste. They it, already, if you're unknown, I get it. But once you're at a certain point, you know, you're known and then you go, well, do you want me or do you don't want me? And I you're don't a care. very specific thing too. You don't, you, you, you're, you're reading everything as John Lovitz basically. I mean, that's. No, that's, but that's what they want a lot. I don't, I don't have, I do, can do any accents and voices and characters and I don't have to, do it the same as me. Was there ever a push by your agent to try to get you into dramas and make you a, an Oscar contender and things no, like that? No, but you know, people say, look, I did a movie where it was a dramatic, uh, it was, uh, Casino Jack. And uh, I had a great part and uh, starts Kevin Spacey. It's about the lobbyist Jack Abramoff. So you watch that and you tell me, <laughs> oh, we're well, a really good actor. But uh, that's because the director left all my scenes in. Uh-huh. You know, and... um. You know, what's funny is about that is they go, don't you need drama and show everybody? I'm like, no. I go, I don't care. Show who and prove what. And I go, everyone that says comedy is harder than drama. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, if it's harder, you think I can't do drama? I'm going out of my, out of my way to be funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they go, yeah, but you just stand there and you're funny. I go, well, I'm not just standing there. Uh -huh. It's it's a choice, and I know, and it's a reaction to, it's playing the scene, and what would I do, and if I'm trying to get a laugh, what would you do? And sometimes it's funnier just to, just to turn your head and just stare at the person forever and not move. And it's called deadpan, and and um, I know what I'm doing. It was your it was your idol growing up? Well, I wanted to be Willie Mays. And <laughs> <laughs> I did. I wanted to be a black baseball player from like I was eight to 15. And then when I was 15, I went, oh, shit. I can't be a black baseball player. God damn. Do you still watch baseball? Or I no? do. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what's your daily, like, what's your day to day like? Like you were accomplished. Well, I was saying after baseball, I wanted to be Woody Allen when I was 13. So oh, you want to be Woody Allen? Take the money and run. And yeah, yeah, you want yeah, to be yeah, comedian yeah. like him. And yeah. I used to do his routines in my college dorm, but I ended up getting to make a movie with him. Which and one? It was uh, it's called Small Time Crooks. 
and I have one, one scene in the movie, just the two of us, and I, I loved it, and we were so in sync. Like, yeah. Does he not feel this? Yeah. This is like the new team. <laughs> And, and it didn't turn out to be the new team. No, but he couldn't have been time. nicer to me. You know, he sure. knew how much it meant to me. And so I that was, probably was your your ultimate then. Oh yeah, well, more than Lorne, more than oh to be in a movie with Woody Allen. Oh yeah, yeah. I never thought I'd be on Saturday Night Live. Now people go to the Growlings to get on it, and, and I just thought like my, Mike Savagino said, you know, get on stage, get seen, and get work. And I knew that was a good place to get seen. Mm. But I never imagined I'd be on Saturday Night Live. It was it was a ridiculous idea. What was that audition like for you? What did you do in the audition? <clears throat> I did four characters. First, I met uh, Al Franken and Tom Davis were producing that year, and then I met them I in their offices. Franken. I used characters. to work there. You did? Yeah, I worked there for a couple of years as an assistant. When I was there? No, it was oh. after you left. I was there when like Will Ferrell was there. Okay. Yeah. So I did that, and then. Then they came to see me in the Groundlings, and I was doing this Master Thespian sketch, and nobody was laughing except for <laughs> Al. Oh, really? Yeah, and I thought, oh, thank God that Saturday Night Live guy's laughing. Oh, wow. And I would tell Al that, and he always started laughing. He thought that was funny. And then met Lauren, then they, and then it kept going, and, they, and then they flew us to New York, and we had to audition in front of a bunch of people, and they put us on tape, and then I came back. It was nerve-wracking as hell. Yeah. Don't kid yourself in a... Came back on a Sunday and I go, oh, I'm not gonna. I go, they go, it's one out of nine men they're gonna pick. And I go, uh, or maybe it was a Friday. I came back. And I go, eh, no way. Out of nine, one out of nine, one out of nine. Mm. Me, mm. no. Was Phil Hartman already on the show? No, no. I'm like, no, nah, they're not gonna pick. I go, one out of nine, me, no. And then on Thursday, Lorraine Newman called me. And shows you got it. And I'm like, what? Wow. Because you got the show. And I was already thinking, all right, I'll just go back to the Groundlings, create new characters, keep going, you know. Wow. And then I call and they go, well, we don't know if you got it. They shouldn't have told you that. So then I called Charles <laughs> Grode and I said, hey, <laughs> Lorraine just called me and said I got the show. And then, then they said, well, we don't know yet. I go, so now I don't know if I got it or not. Because you want me to call and find out? I go, well, yeah, well, could you? Would you mind? He goes, Sure. So then he called me back five minutes later. He goes, you got it. And I go, I got it? He goes, yeah. And I went, oh. And I drove down to the Groundlings. And, and my teacher, Randy Bennett, who was, really, he was teaching a class. I walk in. I go, Randy, I got it. He went, what? I got it. He goes, you got it. I got it. And he started sobbing uh, and hugging me. He got Saturday Night Live. You know. wow. I mean, it was huge. It was, And it was um, Tom Maxwell is really funny. He goes, it's like clockwork every 10 years. <laughs> you know, because Lorraine Newman got it, and then ten years later, I got it. So I was—I'm the second person from the Groundlings that got on the show. Oh wow! You get into SNL, and is that really competitive? And is it super hard? Or you—you you, you get oh, stuff yeah. on right away? <coughs> well, I did. I—I I had like who's three in the cast on you? a week, but I was there till seven in the morning writing. Right. Normally, it take two weeks to write a sketch. And I was writing three a night. Uh, it was exhausting. But, um, well, there was, uh, my first year, it was uh, Randy Quaid and Terry Sweeney oh. and uh, Anthony Michael Hall, Robert Downey Jr. And then they, oh, I was supposed to do Weekend Update, and then, and then a week later, they, they hired Dennis to do it. Oh. That's a whole other story. Oh, Dennis wow. Miller. And, and then uh, Joan Cusack, Denitra Vance, and Nora Dunn were the women. Oh, that's so funny. And then funny. the next year, they kept Dennis and I and Nora. And they got rid of everybody. Yeah, and then they go, we want people you work well with. So, I mean, I, I was sad that they got rid of all those people because I liked them all. They're all extremely talented. You know, and it was like we were working together for a year. But those were all, uh, that's funny. You, I, Well, they're I, more actors. And yeah, then, more and actors, And then they yeah. said, we want to get more people that, the, the difference was the cast the next year was, they go, we want people you work well with. So they got Phil and... And 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 Dana Carvey got it, and he got Kevin Nealon, and then and the Jan Hooks and Victoria Jackson and Dennis. So everybody knew. So I'd worked with Jan on this other sketch show on the Playboy Channel called Twenty Nine Minutes. I knew Jan. Phil I knew from the Growlings. By then we'd become like best friends. Mm. One of my best friends. And then um. And Dana and Kevin and Dennis all knew each other from stand up. 
and Victoria knew that, you know, and I knew Nora, of course. And then, so we all kn knew each other. But the difference was everybody was closer in age in their late 20s, early 30s. And everybody had a comedy background or sketch comedy, mm. something, you know. Did you like that a lot So better? that was the difference. Did you like that a lot better than the cast before, which was more actory? No, I loved everybody before. I mean, I, I thought that they were doing great work. Well, was, look how talented they are. What was I Robert Downey Jr. like back then? Um, well, he was 20, you know. Right. But he was, uh, I he would do these poems. He would make up these poems and he goes, you want to hear one? I go, sure. And he would do it and um, it was... Uh, it was like genius. I thought I said you're a genius. Really, I never heard language used like that. Oh yeah, he was brilliant and a very very nice guy. Really nice. We became good friends back yeah. then. Yeah. Um, and these poems they weren't for SNL. They were just stuff he was writing. No stuff he just did he for for his own amusement. You know. Yeah. And I actually he'd worked before. He helped me get my accountant. You know, I hadn't I'd ever worked. You know, and yeah. And um, he he was great. They're all nice. Anthony, I saw Joan was great. Randy Quaid was great. All super nice. I read somewhere that you likened SNL to being a, an athlete in terms of now you look back on it and it's kind of like, oh, wow, I can't believe I did that. You still feel that way or? Oh, yeah, I can't believe, I, I can't, yeah, I see the show now. I go, oh, yeah, I was on that. But I just visited recently after the Tonight Show and it's like going home. It's, I just... It's right. not foreign to me. It's like I belong here. I'm part of it. How did you learn to sing the national anthem so good? Well, I always wanted to sing. And, the, and my dad wanted to be a singer. So he's always singing and playing music in the house. And I could, I don't know, when I was a kid, I, I could sing. Yeah. And he goes, you really have it. Make your voice. And I go, I don't know. I just like to sing, you know. But I'm working on shows now where I'm going to, uh, where I sing. What are you saying? Yeah, yeah. Like a, like a. Like a real, like, like a funny, but singing. Like good. a show where you play a singer. No, no, where I, I'm me. I'm. Oh, you're me. You're yeah. Yeah. Variety. No, like like uh, there's nightclubs and you sing in a nightclub as a singer like that. Uh -huh. oh, 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 It'll oh, still oh, be oh, funny I though. Oh, I see. A, a live show. A live show. Yeah, where a you're live singing. show. Singing. Yeah. Well, I still be funny. I'm not. You know, no, I know. I know. I've seen I still the want to be song. funny, but but I want to sing and uh, there's, I'm working on it with this guy Randy Waldman, who Kenny G, um, I'm, I know Kenny forever. Anyway, Kenny. He said, Kenny, I want to do a music show. So he introduced me to Randy Waldman. Yeah. If you look at Randy Waldman, he's worked with everybody. He's Barbara Streisand's personal accompanist in her mm. shows and this for 36 years. Oh, wow. He's worked with Michael Jackson, Ray Charles, Frank Sinatra. I mean, everybody. Right. And he wants to do it. And so so I picked the songs and and kind of the style I want to do them. And we arranged them. And Is that what you did? We arranged it. And then I got to learn all the songs. Is that what you did over New Year's when you were p performing live in Vegas? Or was that just stand up? No, that oh, that's I do stand up at the. Uh, it's like a residency once a month at the uh, Laugh Factory, at the Tropicana Hotel in Las Vegas. Go to the website for tickets, and then yeah, <laughs> plug it. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, when is you have a show? This I was just there this weekend. Oh, you were. You have another one in February coming up. Uh, I think this. Yeah, the sixteenth, seventeenth, and eighteenth. What's your live show like? Just What's it like? Just straight stand up, or do you sing or? Well, yeah, I do stand up and sing at the end if there's time. I get an hour. Mm -hmm. It's hard because I have a lot of material. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got to cut stuff and fit it in. But, I, mm -hmm. yeah, I sing at the end. And, you like Vegas? Uh, yeah, I do. I mean, I don't I like live Vegas. there, but it's fun to come in and out. Yeah, I know? like Vegas a lot. Today's podcast is brought to you by Babbel. Guys, let me tell you something. Remember in high school when you had a chance to learn a second language and you blew it off or you didn't really pay attention and you wish you had. Now as an adult, I wish I could speak a second language. Well, that's why I love Babbel, today's sponsor. Now thanks to Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions, there's an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language. Whether you'll be traveling abroad, connecting in a deeper way with family, or just having some free time, Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually actually use in the real world. You know, I live in Southern California, so that's really nice. And that's why Babbel is so great. So you can feel like a smart person. It really, really helps and it makes you feel good. I'm all about enriching my life in, in any way that I can. And this is a great way to do it. Babbel's 15 minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans. But Babbel lessons are created by over 100 language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 
14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day Listen to that, guys. A 20-day money-back guarantee. Right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash Nash. That's babbel.com slash Nash for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. And my thanks to Babbel for sponsoring this podcast. This is the internet's most asked questions about you. Really? Okay, John Lovitz, most asked questions. Let's see what the first question is. (laughs) What is John Lovitz doing now? Am I your doing pod- your podcast? <laughs> yeah, everyone says that. Well, it's true. Ooh, what is your net worth? I would well, love you know, to I, I, know. I, it's not accurate on the internet, and of course, you know, it's not polite to talk, ask that question. Or, but I'll say, Jeff Bezos <laughs> called me last week for a loan, <laughs> so that gives you any idea. What movie did John Lovitz? What movie play in? I'm not sure I understand the question. What movies have I in? Well, I've done a lot of movies over, I think, 60 or I don't know. But I was the famous ones was um, Big and A League of Their Own that Penny Marshall directed. Oh, that was a big movie. It starred Tom Hanks, and then I did um, a lot of Adam Sandler movies. Yeah. He's been great to me. The Wedding Singer, Little Nicky. And, you, get, uh, you still get paid from The Wedding Singer? Get checks residuals, yeah. Well, yeah. Every actor gets residuals. Yeah, on a movie though, you still get you still get that money, right? Like if it plays on Netflix, you get residuals from everything if it's playing anywhere. Yeah, every job. Yeah. What show has John Lovitz played in? Do, do people not have, know how to talk? What are these questions? It's like they don't even know who I am. <laughs> what he played in? How is it that they're asking <laughs> that question? So they know who I am, but they just know the name, but they don't know anything. Like the actor, who what he I played, do or who I was, or anything. Do you know the name John Lovitz? Yes. What's he do? <laughs> what have I played in Saturday Night Live? <laughs> Where is he today? Isn't that the same as what am I doing now? Well, maybe you could do this more. I'm exis- right here. Why don't you answer this more existentially? Like a little, maybe we can go a little bit deeper with you. I'm in a good place. <laughs> You are. <laughs> Look, seriously, I'm 65. Yeah. So when I say that, I feel like I'm lying. Like it's technically true, but I don't feel any different than when I was in, Yeah. I don't know, 13. I don't feel any different. I feel the same way. I'm 49, and I, I feel the same when I was 25. So physically, I don't feel any different. Yeah, I was on SNL 28. I don't feel any different. And time, it just keeps another day goes by. So I, but I, it's not easy uh, 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 living this, staying alive. <laughs> no, when I was younger, you know, people would make fun of old people. And I'd go, what are you doing? I go, you know, you're making, you're going to make, you're making it bad for yourself later on. Yeah. You realize that. Don't yeah, yeah, yeah. If you live, you're going to be old one day. I go, don't. And so you. You feel the same, and then and then you look in the mirror, and you go, "Where my dad said?" He goes, "I look in the mirror. I go, Who's that old man looking back?" You don't feel any different. My mom would say, "That's the secret of getting older. You never feel any different." Yeah, it's just time goes on. So, and then and then you know, unfortunately, your friends pass away, and people you know, it's horrible. Yeah. So I just appreciate. I appreciate I, every day, every night, I go, "Thanks, you God, for another day." Are you, a lot of comedians are like, you know, depressed and happy, you know, up and down. Are you like that? Or are you you a pretty happy guy? No, listen. You seem like you're a pretty happy guy. That's just a bunch of crap. You know, it's people that analyze uh, uh, comedians and and when they say that, it's people that aren't funny, okay? (laughs) And, And they analyze comedy and they analyze comedians. And so they're really, I don't know why, why it is, but I have friends, they go, oh, you're a comedian? I'm funny. I go, okay, great. I don't meet a <laughs> dentist and go, I can fill a tooth. I go, who, you know, I'm not competing with you. Right. But the, the but they always want to go, I'm funny too, you know? And then I go, all right. Yeah. They go, do you want to hear a joke? I go, sure. So they start telling it to me and I go, and da, 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 da. They go, oh, you know it already? I go, yes. Yeah. 
It's all I do. Well, it's it, there's a lot of dramatic actors. There aren't a lot of comedians. So people are just, they want, and what does a comedian do? He makes people laugh. He brings joy. So now you got these people who have no sense of humor going, who want to feel better about themselves, who are miserable, go, well, you know, he's funny. It's the sad clown. It's the mask behind the set. You know, mm. it's a bunch of crap. Uh huh. And they're no more <coughs> happy or sad than anyone else. You know, everyone's living their life. But they they say stuff like that. And and I think they're just jealous, you know, and, and they just, they make st that stuff up. No, I, I'm talking about comedians that like I've known over the years that are like, you well, know. Well, I, I just think it's some are people are pretty, depressed. I don't think it's yeah. every comedian. I don't think you can generalize You're a happy guy. Yeah, I enjoy my life. Good. If something sad happens, do I get sad? Yes. You know, like anybody. But Or they go, this is the other thing they do. They're not a, a comedian. They go, you know. <laughs> It's, they go, comedy is is uh, the juxtaposition of tragedy over time. Yeah. Comedy, the truth is funnier than... Nah, 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 nah. And they have all these things the way they analyze it. Now, you ask any comedian, so when you think of something, write a joke, do you go like, okay, when did it happen? <laughs> okay, is it three months? Yeah, we three years ago? Yeah, we need to wait another year on that one. <laughs> you know, no no comedian thinks like that. Yeah. They just don't. They just think, is this funny? And the other thing they do is is they just look at things differently. And they and really what they do is it's like they it's like a um it's really like a kid. You know, a kid you'll see, kids are really funny. Why? because they take everything they don't they don't know, understand nuance so they take everything literally and then they answer your question literally and they don't know what they're saying mm -hmm. and then they go why are you laughing right, right. they go what what's funny cuz they're taking it literally well that's what com comics do yeah they use a joke as you have a setup and then you take it you go the other direction uh, uh than you expect you know uh huh uh huh what do you think about comedy on the internet and stuff? Do you do you watch TikTok and stuff like that? I do. You like all that? Do you like making like videos? Some of it, most of it that they trying to be funny. It's it's just not. Do you like making videos on your phone and posting them shit like that? Is that fun for you? Or do you not care? No, I haven't done that. Well, you made the George Santos one. I saw it. That's the only time I've done that. That's the only one? Yeah. Oh wow. Well, that was good. But uh I mean I mean, what's I'll tell you, there are certain things that that comics do that's funny, but but the main it, when they go, the truth is some funny. There, I mean, to me, it's when it's just you can't. I don't know. It's like slapstick humor, but it's real. It's like there's a guy in the orchestra and he's playing a timpani, and I know whoever put it up is a good sense of humor. And he goes, "This guy had one job," and you show the guy hitting the timpani drum. Right, and then he goes to hit it a second time, and it goes flying out of his hand and hits some lady <laughs> in the head playing the harp. Right, it's hysterical. Yeah, but that was like a real life. Yeah, thing it was that real. Happened. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. That's what's tough about comedy now. Is and then she to get people off. And she what? She walked off. She did. I mean, if she really got hurt bad, it's not funny. But it, right. but it just looks it's hysterical. <laughs> Or they have some woman roller skating. It's just for a second, and then you know, in the hallway, and, I, and she goes right into a glass case. Yeah. You know, kaboom. You know, and you go, so you think it's funny when people get hurt? And I go, <laughs> e yeah, some of it. <laughs> but a lot of it, it, the people are, they're trying to act out a sketch, and it's, it's you know, it's just. You spend a lot of time watching stuff on the internet like that? You go into I like do. a hole and. I watch, yeah. I, yeah. You know, you. It's kind of addicting. You watch one video and then I keep going. Yeah. And then eventually I go, I got to get off this toilet. <laughs> you know, but I think it's funny. Okay. We're going to do like a rapid fire, a bunch of rapid fire questions. And then, yeah, we'll be done. Okay. You ready? This is rapid fire. With John you want Lawrence. my short answers? Yeah. You just got to answer quickly. Okay. Ready? Favorite SNL host? Uh, I like John Lithgow. Uh, bench warmers or a league of their own? Mm. League of their own. <laughs> Margarita, salt or no salt? No salt. Burritos or fajitas? Eh, neither. Ever made love to three people at once? Do I count myself? <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, favorite SNL skit you ever did? 
Probably, uh, match, well, there's two, Match Thespian, I know one, but one more mission with Phil Hartman. What's that one? It was um, a spoof of these 40 movies. That was Phil's favorite sketch that he ever did. Yeah, yeah. And I'm a, I'm a head of a, a studio, and Phil's an actor, and a and I got to let him go. And it, it's a funny sketch. Yeah. My favorite. We rehearsed it a lot. We learned our lines. You know, they don't learn their lines a lot on the show, and you... If you don't know your lines, you can, and Penny, you you can't do the sketch. And Penny Marshall, she befriended me after my first show. She goes, "Learn your lines." I go, oh, "You can tell I'm reading the cards." She goes, "Yes," because I thought my eyes. I'd never used cue cards in, and, and it was the first time, and so I thought my eyes. I could like look at it real quick and look back. She goes, "I can see your eyes darting." And I go, "Crap! You can see it." That's funny, though. But she was right. I would learn my lines. So that's no, I. A lot. Most people wouldn't learn their lines, but I did. It was, I. It was a lot of work. But the lines change, don't they, from dress to air? Yeah, they do. But you still got to know it. Still gotta you got to be able to play the sketch. So you have like an hour before eleven thirty to get those. No, lines they get down. notes from ten thirty to eleven, and then you're on at eleven thirty. So you only have a half an hour to get those lines right. Right. So I would. Book. I would write. It's insane. That is like an I athlete. would take notes on the last page of my script and write all the scenes that were in and make a line and write all the notes and then and the order it was in and and um and then uh right before I'd go out uh, you, you have a, a a dresser, you know, you're a lot of time you have 2 minutes to make a major change. So you're out under the rafters changing. Mm-hmm. And I so I would and you'd have a makeup person and a and a person a customer as your team. So I'd say I'd say to them, uh, just, I go, when the sketch is over, I, I'd say, which is true, I go, I'm not going to remember what's next. I don't have a clue. Just forget it. So just, just I'll come off and just grab me mm. and just take my hand and, and go, we're going here. And, and you'd plan where you would go and tell me what the next sketch is. Because I go, I'll have no idea. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because I don't remember, because you're so into the thing, you, know, you can't remember. Because they changed the order of the show. And yeah, 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 yeah. I don't remember. And so then I would do it, and i go, and then I'd have my notebook. i go, let me see my notes. they go here, and they'd have it, and I would look at my notes for this, and then go out. Because you, cu- you couldn't remember all your notes. You know, you, I'd have to write them down. Uh, uh, what's your handicap? My swing. <laughs> Tennis or pickleball? Tennis? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Pickleball is for people that can't play tennis and they don't want to move. Is your house worth over $10 million? Which one? <laughs> Has anyone ever asked you to officiate a wedding? Yes. Did you do it? No. Why not? I don't want to do that. Was it like a, a big joke. fanny? Was it like a big fan of yours <clears throat> that like wanted you there? My agent. He asked you? Yeah. You my said no your agent? agent? Yeah. Really? If somebody asked me to officiate their wedding, I would do it. Uh, favorite rabbi story? You mean a real story or a joke? Either one. I'll favorite. tell you, these rabbis, two of my f- friends' kids had bar mitzvahs, and the stuff the rabbi said was the most ridiculous things <laughs> I ever heard. Oh, yeah? What'd yeah, they, they go, one of them, it was a double bar mitzvah, two boys on a Saturday. So, you know, they're working for three years and learning Hebrew and working their butts yeah, off. Yeah, working their butts They do off. the big speech, and the rabbi goes, and now we're going to get the now bar mitzvah boys. So he talks to one kid. Do you play any sports? Yeah. What do you play? Soccer. Soccer? That's not a Jewish sport. I'm like, shut up. Like, what are you criticizing the kid? And the kid, do you play any instruments? Yeah. What do you play? Saxophone. The saxophone? That's not a Jewish instrument. We should play the violin. What is this guy from 1870? Yeah. An idiot criticizing these kids on this big day. Ever make love to a supermodel? Who's question? Who's asking you? Yeah, I'm asking. You know the answer to that. I don't. Don't you? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> okay. Favorite song of all time? We can work it out by the Beatles. <laughs> That's a good one. The Canyon or the 101? The Canyon. I've got a romantic date in Malibu. Where do I go? Joffrey's. All right, guys. Listen. Uh, my thanks to John Lovitz for coming here. John, thank you so much. This was awesome. John, where can we find you? I do a show called, a game show every day called Funny You Should Ask. Yeah, there you go. Which is like Hollywood Squares on TV. And it's just comedians telling jokes. It's fun to do. And then I do... Oh, I saw that. It's like a Byron Allen show, right? Yeah, Byron Allen. And then I do... um, 
Las Vegas every month. Great. Yeah. At the Laugh Factory at the Tropicana. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, I'm all over YouTube and stuff I've done. And and then on Netflix, there's some movies there. (laughs) Well, there you go. (laughs) <laughs> I'm on Twitter at Real John Lovitz. You tweet much? A little bit. Yeah. You ever get in trouble on there? No, but you know, Twitter like it's it's kind of ridiculous because you can I I go watch, all right, one word, and people go nuts. Uh right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go watch. So I go, all right, watch this. I wrote vaccination vaccinated with a question mark. Yeah, you know, that's all I wrote. Vaccinated, and every vaxer and anti-vaxer mm-hmm. and this, and they're going on and on. I go, look at this; it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's just I, I didn't even say whether they, and I did get vaccinated, but they go, should you or shouldn't you? You know, I'm I'm not telling people to do it or not. Mm. At first, I thought they really should. Now I don't know, but right, guys, listen. Thank you so much. My thanks to John. Uh, go look for him everywhere on Netflix, Hulu. Uh, all his movies with Adam Sandler and go check out his new game show. And that's like how he, how he Mandela does that game show too, right? You guys like all get together. How he does it a lot. Yeah. And he does it with Louis you. Anderson did all of them besides me, but sadly he passed away. Do you, do you tape that? You said you do that every day. It airs every day. We tape like six shows uh, a syndicated. day, twice a month. Yeah. And what's it called? Funny You Should Ask. Funny, uh, Funny You Should Ask. Go check out John's show. Funny You Should Ask. John, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for editing this. <laughs> John, you... This, Sorry about You're concept. definitely our Great weirdest attitude. guest. Huh? You're definitely our weirdest guest. Weirdest? Yes. Weird? Why? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you mean I'm the only guest with a brain? <laughs> I'm also probably your smartest guest. Are you smart? Do you have like a high IQ? You do. Well, maybe that's why. You're slumming Albert here. Einstein... Begged me to teach him about physics. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.